In fact, every time we run the car, we learn something new, and, and that's the aim of the game. The aim is to try and understand the car faster than our competitors. Why are we so competitive on Friday compared to Saturday and Sunday? Well, that's a really good question, and it's a question we are trying to answer at the moment. I think if you were to look at Friday's running, it's probably the most competitive we've been at any point through the season so far. Between Friday and Saturday, we would have made some changes, um, and actually those changes were fairly minor. There are also changes in conditions, um, and we need to go through all of that data, extract as much understanding as we can from that, and then use that to move forward over the next couple of races. Was Lewis's car damaged in the first lap contact with Alonso? Um, the answer to that question is no, we don't think so. Uh, the contact was wheel to wheel. And as always, we have lots of engineers looking at the data that's pouring off the cars. So the aerodynamicists are looking at pressure taps on the floors and wings. They're looking at the push rod loads. Um, and our chief engineer will be looking at all the other suspension loads and making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. So we can very quickly tell whether there's an issue with the car and there was no issue to find. Was the strategy with George always to go long or was that something that came to the circumstances? Well, I think you can tell by the fact we fitted the hard, we kept our options open. Our plan was always to be able to run an offset strategy relative to the cars around us. So by an offset strategy, what I mean is if you've got a car which you think might have a pace advantage, you want to be running a different strategy to the cars around you. That way, if you get caught up in a DRS train, you're always going to get to a portion of the race where you're going to get some clean air when the others pit and you're able to then run long. And that's what we had in mind with George. Um, added to that, there's also the potential benefit of safety cars. If that safety car came out after the others had pitted, you end up with a clear advantage. And, and that's the way it obviously played out for George. Um, I have to say, George drove a fantastic race this weekend. Starting on the hard tyre when these competitors around him were on the medium. All right, we lost a couple of places at the start, but George kept his head. He did all of the right things. He waited for the tyres to come towards him. And as we started to get heat into the, the harder tyres, and as the medium tyres started to degrade, we saw the pace advantage that George had, and he was able to cut through the field and do a really, really good job. And to finish that race in fifth from where he started, that's a fantastic achievement. Lewis mentioned the overheating of the hard tyre on the radio, and the team replied to him that that would improve with time. Why was that? Well, the majority of the heat that goes into the tyres comes from what's called hysteretic heating. It comes from the fact that the rubber is constantly deflecting and bending, and that sort of constant movement in the nonlinear rubber means that it just adds heat, and that hysteretic heat is being added all of the time. But what happens is as the tyres go through the stint, they wear, and as they wear, the gauge of the tyre gets smaller and smaller, and as the tyre gets smaller and smaller in that gauge, you get less of this hysteretic heating because there's just less rubber moving. So what happens is at the start of the stints, the tyres are at their hottest, and as the stint wears on um, and the tyres wear, you get less and less heat input into the tyre and the tyre temperature comes down and becomes more manageable. What exactly happened with Lewis during the safety car period and why didn't we pit him? The VSC came first and we pitted George, exactly the right thing to do. We were then in this position where we would have had quite a big gap between Valtteri, closely followed by Lewis, with George a chunk behind. And at that stage of the race, uh, with both Valtteri and Lewis on the hard tyre, Lewis was closing into the back of Valtteri and was going to have a chance to overtake on track for a normal racing pass. And that's why we expected the race to sort of pan out. But that virtual safety car very quickly turned into a full safety car. And at that point, that was just going to close all the gaps up, compress the field back up, and we were going to be in a position where George was on a brand new medium against an ageing hard tyre on Lewis and an ageing hard tyre on Valtteri. So, we were caught between a rock and a hard place. The safety car came at completely the wrong time for Lewis. If we didn't pit him, he was always going to have a George behind him on a much newer tyre. If we did pit him, he would lose track position to George. He'd end up behind George on track. Although Lewis would have had a new tyre, the only new tyres we had available to us was the hard or the soft. And while you might think the soft would have been a good solution, we knew that the soft tyre would overheat very quickly. We knew it would overheat even more quickly because he was just behind George fighting on track and that would have put even more heat into the tyres. So we were in that position where we were sort of caught between a rock and a hard place and so there was no sort of real right answer. And if you were watching the TV, you would have seen us asking Lewis that question, what did he think he wanted to do? And that was just because there was no right or wrong answer and sometimes the drivers have a better feel in the car than we as the engineers do looking at the data. So as it happens, it was just the circumstances that took place meant Lewis lost out because of the safety car. 
Unfortunately, Lewis has been unlucky a couple of times already this season, but it's just the way things pan out and hopefully over the season it balances up and that he'll have some advantages that come to him through the timings of the safety cars in future races. Why did George let Lewis back through after their battle on track? Um, well, the simple answer is in the eyes of the stewards, um, George had gained a lasting advantage by passing uh, Lewis off the track and therefore we were asked to swap the cars back over and that's what we duly did. Did Lewis and George find the race more exhausting than previous races? Um, I believe George made a comment in the press that he'd found that pretty hard and obviously he was battling through the field in a race that was both hot and humid and those two conditions of hot and humid means you sweat a lot in the car um, and the drivers actually lose a considerable amount of weight during the race just in that sweat that's sort of lost to the atmosphere. I'm sure they'll have done more difficult races in the past. Um, Malaysia in the past has been, been a really difficult race for both heat and humidity. Um, but Miami was probably up there with, with those sort of races from the past. Did the upgrades we brought to Miami give us the expected step forward or at least give us some direction for future races? Well, I think it's important to differentiate two things. One is the sort of the normal upgrade path and the other one is sort of fixing the issues that we're having with bouncing in and, and other things that are compromising performance. So the wings that we brought definitely brought us the performance we were expecting and were a step forward. The experiments we were doing on track trying to understand the bouncing, we gathered a lot of data. We gathered a lot of data on Friday um, when we had strong performance and we gathered data through the race. And as always, the engineers are pouring through that, gaining understanding. In fact, every time we run the car, we learn something new and, and that's the aim of the game. The aim is to try and understand the car faster than our competitors. Although at the moment we're on the back foot a little bit with that, there's a huge amount of effort, a huge amount of work going in to try and understand how we improve the car. How do we find that next little step forward? How do we get rid of the bouncing? How do we get back to being competitive or competitive relative to the front running teams, which is where we want to be? Thank you for all of your questions. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks time after the Spanish Grand Prix.